Hi everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with 60 and Me. Thanks so much for being here today. Hope that everything's well in your world. I'm having a good morning so far. I was up bright and early and been for a walk and uh, just enjoying um, just the seasons changing and uh, how beautiful it is to get outside. The little town I live in is actually growing and it's just been interesting to watch it transform and change and also to watch myself uh, tra transform and change in it as well. I want to talk a little bit about that in a minute, but my tea. Um, I'm drinking a cup of pucker tea. It's actually called Revival. And and it's a really interesting tea. It's got mint, which I don't drink very often, but it's got cardamom and ginger. So it's kind of like a chai tea, but it's got a, like a clean taste. It's not milky or it's just very, very nice. So it's called Revival. So here we are reviving ourselves uh, this beautiful day. So I want to thank our sponsor, first of all, for today's show, International Living. International Living, as you know, is a company that helps people when they're planning retiring overseas. And they have got people all around the world, correspondents, who write about the reality of living in certain places, you know, whether it's Panama or Portugal or Thailand. These are all places that they have people and they'll do the homework for you. So it's really cool um, service and they want to share their uh, global in uh, investment or their global retirement index with us so if you go up to um, internationalliving.com and then forward slash 60 and me they'll uh, be happy to send you that global retirement index and you can take a look at it and uh, make your own choices so uh, topic today I mentioned it was about transformation and um, just share a little bit about my own situation and also refer to an article by Wendy um, Edwardson. Wendy wrote this article and when I first read it, it was just like, aha, it was just such an aha moment that I thought, you know, I, I really want to share this with people because it's how I have felt a lot of my life. She called it square pegs in a round world, embracing your authentic self as you age. And she actually talks a lot about the fact that as we get older, that's a gift. That's our gift of uh, opportunity to transform. That it's the one time in our lives when we really don't have to worry about what other people think about us or what we, um, you know, how, how we're judged. It's kind of an open-ended time. So anyway, the point is, that she says that Wendy was always she just didn't feel like she fit in the world. You know, she so she spent life on the periphery, a square peg in a round world. And she never spoke out against, um, you know, the, the public opinion, which was more mainstream, where a lot of people tend to go to stay, you know, conformity. But she always felt like she was a little bit on the outside. People that are artistic and em empathetic people often feel this as well. And I think this is where I come, where I come into the picture too, because I think I'm a, I am a super empathetic person. I, I think there's an empath. I think there's a word for us, which is I really do feel the, um, the pain of other people. And I really feel the um, suffering and um, uh, the complexity. And I always am thinking about that. And so my heart is always <laughs> going out to people who I want to be helping. And um, she, but she, she realized that this was a kind of a gift, that it was actually a way to get closer to people and um, connect. So she looked at um, people that she admired or people that were admired in school or in, in the workplace. You know, she talks about Miss Perfect. You know, Miss Perfect is like always like put together, like never a hair out of place, never, you know, never um, stepping outside the, the boundaries, always in the lines, right? Uh, admired for her skills at everything. She could cook, she could, uh, you know, she could dance, she could ski, she could, uh, you know, talk, she could write, everything. This Miss Perfect doesn't exist, by the way. But we think she does, and we think she does uh, as a as a kind of a something we have to look up to and some and, and emulate and, and aspire to. You know, her hair was always perfect, and when you know, if, if you called her up in the middle of the night, she'd come over to your house in the perfect outfit and the hair done and makeup and everything. So Miss Perfect is is an exist. She doesn't exist. A fantasy, our fantasy, because we feel like we are trying to live up to something that we are not, or cannot be, or don't want to be. And that's the square peg in the round world kind of uh, model. So she looked at different models, different people that would you know, play her in a movie. Would it be Jane Seymour or quirky Ellen Barkin? Would it be you know, Glenn Close uh, or um, not Glenn Close? Anyway, Glenda Jackson is the one she chose. And this was uh, she saw her in a movie called A Touch of Class. And this is a bold woman, you know, a brass woman. She says what she feels. She's outspoken and she is, um, you know, rich, famous and talented. And this is the kind of uh, person that, that Wendy somehow could relate to and wanted to be like that. 
She wanted to be strong and outspoken and have a, you know, be a round peg in a round world, in her round world. So she um, she basically started to realize and has written about it in this article, how just the aging process is a gift of transformation, it gives us the strength and the permission to be ourselves, you know, to be our own normal. This is a little card I remember, be our own normal. And there is no normal outside of what we say, what we are. And, you know, she, she says now it's her turn to be the person that she always wanted to be. Have you, have you done that in your life? Have you sort of found yourself um, being someone else's person, you know, for your partner perhaps or for the people at work or just in general? Have you always been trying to please other people and not to find who you really, really were? And she, she says, I finally decided I don't want to be normal. I just don't want to be normal. What's what's the value in that? What is normal? And you know, you define your own normal in a way that is um, meaningful to you. So she's fallen in love. She said with the fearless, eclectic, and outspoken woman that she is. You know, our life experiences they, they give us wisdom. They give us um, a depth of, of character. They give us power. And we can ignore that and just continue on our path of conformity, or we can be ourselves. We can be our, you know, beautiful, bold, brave, courageous, fun, <laughs> you know, a loving, eclectic self. We can do what we want. Yes. So she says she's an introverted woman masquerading as an extrovert, and she can do it. This is fine. A lot of us are introverts and we learn skills, particularly if you, like me, moved around a lot when you were younger. You just learned to be very skillful at um, dealing with situations, you know, even though you're actually quiet, quite a quiet person. So this is her, her message to us today, you know, to be passionate and be authentic and be you. Just be you. I'd love to know more about this. I mean, has maturing or getting older liberated you from stereotypes? Do you feel that you're, you're free of some of those stereotypes now that you are, are a little bit older? How have you redefined yourself in your 60s? Did, could you relate to what Wendy was saying here about wanting to break away from normal <laughs> and be something more interesting, be bolder, braver? I would love to hear your conversation, your comments below. Please leave them in the section below um, and, you know, just really um, treasure this message. And thank you, Wendy, for writing it. Uh, I would also like to remind you guys to go out to our channels, uh, to 60me.com. Also, our Twitter account. We've got Twitter going on, too. And uh, also uh, Facebook, of course. Uh, you can actually on Facebook, you can specify that you want to see our notifications or our posts first. So that is a way of making sure you always see our things on Facebook. Sometimes it can get hidden in the in the crowd. But uh, we have great channels. And of course, finally, YouTube. YouTube has become a huge channel for us. We have 50,000 plus, I think 56,000 now uh, subscribers. And people are having wonderful conversations. And it's meaningful, meaningful stuff. And also, of course, Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash 60 and me. It's a private group, uh, VIP club. It's got uh, local, uh, more exclusive videos. We do a live show every uh, month. And it's a, just a really lovely group, of a smaller group of women that you can, where you can join a forum for conversation. So ways to become you. These are all ways to help you to become you in your 60s and beyond and to have a, you know, enjoy being outside the box, living in, the, in this new, bold, brave world. So tell us, has aging actually helped you to overcome your stereotypes? Look forward to your comments. Um, I really do. I love, love joining in the conversation. Have a great, great day wherever you are. Go out and be bold and brave and wonderful. And we'll see you all again real soon. Bye-bye for now.